Welcome back. The Democratic Republic of Congo is a natural treasure trove. It boasts vast biodiversity, the world's second largest rainforest, and it's brimming with precious resources like diamonds, gold, timber, and the much coveted oil. Some of that oil can be found within the 7,800 square kilometers of the Runga National Park. The park says about one third of the world's mountain gorillas live in these resource, resource rich sorry, forests and its tropical peatlands protect the planet by storing carbon. But there is, of course, the oil. And now there's this. Starting tomorrow, the Congo plans to start auctioning off large spots of parkland and oil and gas box to the highest bidder. The country recently used this video to promote the auction on social media and tagged two oil giants. Despite the strong opposition that's come, including a petition to stop the auction, government officials say it isn't their priority to save the planet. Not when more than 70% of Congolese live in on less than $2 a day. And wealthy nations made their fortunes by digging and drilling for oil. The option we took is to give those from the poorest backgrounds to try and improve their lives through their economy. So 100,000 signatures is fine, but there are Congolese who need to eat. NGOs cannot dictate how a sovereign country is led. We want to welcome Mbong Aki Foka Takfak from Johannesburg. She's a pan-African activist and head of communications for Greenpeace Africa. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Linda. Uh, so the oil and gas permits are for auction are in areas that are part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site, home to uh, some of the Earth's last remaining mountain gorillas and also a, a carbon-rich ecosystem. Just how significant is this move by the DRC? Um, to say the least, it is, it is mind-boggling. It is extremely significant. At a time when the crisis, uh, the climate crisis is upon us all, um, the world is watching with its own eyes, Europe burning, um, floods and droughts are de devastating livelihoods and lives across Africa. And for the Congolese government to persist to go ahead with this auctioning of oil blocks, overlapping peatlands overlapping some of the most sensitive ecosystems that are protecting us against the climate disaster at this point is by far the most irresponsible thing, the most irresponsible step to take at this moment. And Mbong, if this does proceed, what are the, the other long-term impacts to this region, to the world? And at this stage, what can be done to stop this from moving forward? Well, I guess the impact would, would continue to be what we're seeing already. It's heat waves, it's floods, it's, it's droughts, which, is, which means that farmlands continue to fill. Um, but we are not backing off from this. I think there's millions of Congolese who are also realizing that the promise of oil, the promise of the greatness that happens um, when we start exploring oil, has never really delivered for most Africans. Oil has proven across the continent to be um, really have a dark legacy, to be brutal in, 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 its, in the way it is used across the African continent. And there are many communities who are, who are committed to resist this. And maybe just to let you know, um, our team in the DRC just came back from a two weeks uh, field trip visiting at least 21 villages across the Lake Ubemba, where some of these um, lands would be, which would be affected by the oil blocks auction. And the communities were in total shock and completely ignorant of the fact that um, this destruction of oil will be coming their way in a few, in, in, in months to come.